Pick a tight end, and here he is for the touchdown to give Pittsburgh the lead again. Well, I think in this case here, he, he just had, he had two tight ends in there, just one wide receiver, so he has a double end. And you see, Heath Miller's going to come up. He runs inside now. Ben sees him all the way, and he can lead him in the end zone perfectly. Reed now for the extra point. So it took him 71 seconds to get the lead back. And their offense was kind of dormant most of this second half until this. And that makes it a five-point game. 21-16 as Roethlisberger leads him right down the field in a hurry. The X Games on ESPN. Athletes redefining their sport. Unbelievable! When does athletic skill transcend the sport? And he's got it over the height! Man, that was huge! When does a trick become a miracle? Miss a special encore of X Games 11 Thursdays this October only on ESPN. San Diego kept chipping away. Finally, catch him, lead by two, and in 71 seconds, the Steelers three plays go down the field and lead by five. Jeff Reed. down to the 39-yard line by Veron Haynes. 10-22 remaining in the fourth in San Diego. The final day of 2006 World Cup qualifying on ESPN is this Wednesday. First up, live from Europe, Group 1 leaders Netherlands look to finish on top against the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. Then later, we stay in Europe with a group clash between leaders Portugal and Latvia. Plus, we'll wrap up all the other contests and tell you who's in, who's out, and who's on the bubble. The final day of World Cup qualifiers, Wednesday on ESPN. This week, the PGA Tour stops in Las Vegas as the top money leaders tee it up for a $4 million jackpot during the Michelin Championship at Las Vegas. Live, first round Thursday on ESPN. Hines Ward, two big catches to set up a touchdown for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and Ward tonight has caught five for 79 yards. Now San Diego at its own 38-yard line. Down by five. 10-22 remaining in the fourth period. Pressure on Breeze. He's forced to get it away in a hurry. Blitz up the middle. You know, one of the, the big matchups that's been going on all night is Troy Palomalo against Antonio Gates, and they've been going after each other just about on every play. Before the play, during the play, after the play. Palomalo's looking for someone on, a, on an interception to block. He hit Gates so hard he knocked his hat right off. And here's here's Bill Cower, I think, talking to him about that. You know, one is how you play Gates, but the other thing is we have to keep everything under control here. We can't lose our temper. We can't go crazy out there. We can't get penalties. Palomalo is a very, very tough guy. Second and ten. And the flag comes in, as you can see it, as the ball got to Antonio Gates. And again, Palomalo is right there in the middle of the action. Yeah, he was waiting for him. Palomalo on that one, he's usually up towards the line of scrimmage. That time, he was a deep safety. He was about 15 yards deep. Drew Brees led him right into that. Number 51, and then he's, that's a five-yard penalty. Automatic first down. It's illegal contact, not interference. It's simply a five-yard call on Barrier. That's Palomalo, how deep he is. See, he's just that deep safety, and they try and hit that seam route, and they try and get it to him before Palomalo, before you get to Palomalo. And I don't think Antonio Gates is too happy with that. Mm -hmm. You know, that you run a post, and you run right in there to Troy Palomalo. I don't think Ooh. so. Mm -mm. Because you know that when you're running there, I mean, you may as well catch it anyway because there's going to be a heck of a collision. I don't know that I'd call that play. Palomalo is... 5'10", 212, well-distributed pounds. 
and Gates gets tackled by Polamalo at the 47 yard line. Yeah, and he's all over the field. If you run, it, it seems like Troy Polamalo is always up at or around the line of scrimmage. And when you pass, he's always there to make the tackle, too. I mean, he probably he probably has about 10 tackles tonight. He's one of these guys, yeah, you, you watch him play and you can't avoid him. He's, he's in on everything. Yeah, and, he, and he's everywhere. Like I said, he's more like a rover, a wild card guy because he'll play corner, he'll play safety, he'll play linebacker. He's playing a corner type position now. Kimo von Olhoffen says, I was induced. Think he used that word? <laughs> a facsimile thereof. Hey, ref, he caught me offside. Encroachment. <laughs> Defense, number 67. The five yard penalty. Still first down. I was induced. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, you weren't here, Sam. Uh, Ricardo Coakley out of the game for Pittsburgh. A left shoulder injury. Now, he was mostly in on nickel and dime packages for the Steelers. They do have Willie Williams, though, the veteran from that 95 team that went to the Super Bowl, Alan John. Willie Williams, uh, the last, as you say, remaining Super Bowl participant when they lost to Dallas. Power's only trip to the Super Bowl and his mentor Marty Schottenheimer still trying to get to the big one for the first time. First and five, Tomlinson. And they've done a great job on Tomlinson tonight because here's a guy coming into the game. We're talking about him as the best back in the league and they've held him to 13 carries, 36 yards, 2.8. Now this is a good defense and it's a defense that doesn't have any guests. There's no one that isn't a tackler on this defense and we talked about how, how tough that middle is to run against and then and so they've been trying to get out a little wider and there's not much there either because the safeties are tacklers and the corners are tacklers. So that streak for the Steelers not giving up a hundred yard rusher in the equivalent almost of a full season. And Breeze is going to go deep. And Breeze is looking for Parker and the pass is underthrown and broken up by Ike Taylor. You know, Breeze does that a lot. He'll, he'll, he'll leave his deep ball a little short. I mean, he just didn't get enough arm in this one. You see Taylor here, he's, he's kind of in a chase position, and the ball has to be let out. The ball was too short. Had he, had he let him out, got it up over, and let Parker run, he could have had a chance at this. But he threw it short. And he does that quite a bit on the deep ball. Third down and four now at the 40-yard line. Eight and a half to go. Tomlinson, quick hitter. First down, 25-yard line. That burst through the middle and stopped by Chris Oak. Gain of 14. Yeah, that's what a great back will do for you is, is you know you can be third and four. That's a, a passing situation on most teams, but when you have a Ladanian Tomlinson, you can be third and four, and he can make a run like this for you. And you see what happened? Mike Goff, the right guard, made a good block on Troy Polamalu. And that sprung him, and now Tomlinson with a spin move as he goes to the outside. Gets the ball to the 21-yard line, and Polamolo in on another tackle. Let's go back to the play before with Tomlinson. Well, we'll see number 79, Mike Goff. He's, he's going to be the, the lead guy right there, right there. He gets Polamalu, and then Polamalu can't get a good shot at Tomlinson, so he gets about four more yards. Second and six. At the 22. Please. Caldwell. Rishay Caldwell makes his first catch of the game. He's tackled by Ike Taylor, and that's good enough to move the chains. I think the Chargers offensively have this figured out now that, that if they're going to do everything for Tomlinson and, and for Gates, we got to get the ball to other guys. They get it to Parker, and on this one here, they just get it, they get it out there to Caldwell. Under seven minutes remaining in a five-point game at the 15. Drive that began at the San Diego 38-yard line. Quarterback draw, and Breeze takes it to the eight-yard line. You get in this situation here, Alice, whatever it takes. 
That's what Drew Brees is thinking now. You know, those things you probably couldn't have done in the first quarter. You couldn't have done in the second quarter. You probably couldn't do in the third quarter. But now look how those 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 blockers kind of stick to those defenders a little longer in the fourth quarter. And Cameron, the offensive coordinator, good call there. Game of seven will be second and three at the eight-yard line. And they give it to Ladanian Tomlinson. He's going to come up a yard shy. So it's going to be third and one. And the Chargers, who have been so proficient in the red zone this season and last season as well, on their last three possessions, they've been stymied as they move the ball down into Pittsburgh territory because they have settled for three field goals on those last three possessions. Right, and the reason that they're so good and is the guys have been stopped is Tomlinson running or Antonio Gates catching. And that's what the Steeler defense has stopped. Third and one, huge play. And they give it to their horse, Tomlinson. First and goal. Holt makes the tackle, and we go down to five minutes to play in regulation. You yeah, remember earlier we talked about how Lundanian Tomlinson will, will end the run, how he'll get that shoulder down. Watch it right here at the end. Right there. He's going to get that shoulder down to get another yard. Tomlinson has scored a touchdown in 16 consecutive games, and Pittsburgh will take a timeout. You know how you can tell a running back's tired is when he doesn't even pull up his socks. 21-16. <laughs> timeout defense. Matt Morton off the fist, a diving grab by Tavares in center field for out number two. There aren't many he can't run down out there. Bell hits one diving stop by Zimmerman. Great pitch to throw the first and he got it. Bell takes the right center field, Reed Johnson over, makes the catch! Everybody has to hustle back and Ortiz barely made it to second base. Three and two the count. The runners go. Fastball. Center field. Bernie Williams just looks at it. Go! Home run! In 1987, three-time race winner Al Unser Sr. was without a ride for the Indy 500. But when Team Penske driver Danny and Gaius was injured in a crash, Unser was called into action. The 47-year-old veteran made the most of his opportunity. Working his way up from his 20th place starting position, Unser outlasted Mario Andretti and Roberto Guerrero to claim his fourth win, becoming the oldest winner in race history. Point game. Pittsburgh had to take the timeout or they were going to leave a wide receiver unguarded. And that's why they stopped the clock. It's first down and goal from the one. And Tomlinson is into the end zone for a touchdown. 17 consecutive games with a touchdown and a huge one here to put him up in front by one. And now they'll go for two. Boy, this guy is something special. I mean, you know what they're going to do. They know what they're going to do. Now just stop it. And he can put his body in so many different lanes and so many different angles and make so many cuts in such a short area that there's no one like him. NFL record is 18 consecutive games with a touchdown by the fabled Lenny Moore. And they'll have a chance to duplicate that in Oakland next week. But first things first, as they try to make it a three-point lead on a two-point conversion. And they'll give it to Tomlinson again. And he can't get there, which puts Pittsburgh in a position to win the game, potentially, with a field goal. Larry Foote makes the stop. 4.42 left in regulation. San Diego, 22, and Pittsburgh, 21.
When you speak of a club's special teams unit, you begin with a place kicker. He boots the ball off a tee from his team's own 30-yard line. The second player you mention is the returner. This is the player receiving the kick on the opposite end of the field. The returner's objective is to run the ball back across the goal line that the kicking team is defending. This is a rare feat to pull off, so establishing field position close to or beyond the 50-yard line is desired and creates a great advantage to his team's offensive unit. If the kick goes through the returning team's end zone or the returner takes a knee in the end zone, his offense receives the ball at their own 20-yard line. If a fair catch is called, the kicking team cannot touch the returner and the ball is down where the catch is made. If it is kicked out of bounds, the receiving team gets the ball 30 yards from where it was kicked or where the ball went out of bounds, the more advantageous of the two. Once the ball has gone 10 yards or is touched by the receiving team, it's a free ball. This week, the PGA Tour stops in Las Vegas as the top money leaders tee it up for a $4 million jackpot during the Michelin Championship at Las Vegas. Live, first round Thursday on ESPN. Tomlinson already holds the NFL record in most games, consecutive games with a rushing touchdown. Now he hones in on Lenny Moore, the great ex Colt, Baltimore Colt. That's next week. The first things first, tonight's tonight. It's a one point game, and Cedric Wilson will run back the Caden kickoff and put him in pretty good field position with a nice run back all the way out to the 39 yard line. Ben Roethlisberger. You know, we were talking about him earlier. How, you know, when I first saw him, I was, I was, I was amazed how well that he moved and ran and bought time. And he's so big and strong, you know, that he can just avoid tackles. They just can't get him to the ground. So, so they'll, they'll even have organized runs like that was a, a late draw. And then, and then they got in that formation, two tight ends, and he throws a perfect strike to his tight end. Jerome Bettis is the running back. He's been alternating with fast Willie Parker, and they give it to the bus, and the bus picks up about three. Igor Oshansky, number 99, makes the stop. I love a game with Igor Oshansky and Timo von Olhoffen playing in it. Uh, and, and they're both playing the same position. Right. They're both the, the right defensive end in a 3-4 alignment, which is tough. I mean, I mean, you have to be a tough guy to be a defensive end in a 3-4 alignment because it's a lot more like being a tackle than a defensive end. And those are tough names. Second and seven, and that's caught a little short of the first down. The tight end, Heath Miller, gets taken down by Keel, setting up a very big third down and one at the 47-yard line with the clock ticking down under four minutes. And now this is Bill Cowher's call here. Do you? There's really two things you can do. You can you know, run with you know, your big running back, Jerome Bettis, to pick up that first down, or you can put him in there. He's in there now, and you can play action pass to him and come up with a bigger play. Bettis is normally money on third and one. 75% for his career, and he just does get it. So three out of four times on the third and one when they've handed it to him in his illustrious 13-year career, he's picked up the first down and a very big one here. Yeah, we talk about lanes and Tomlinson, the lean he has. Jerome Bettis has a lean, but it's a different type of lean. I mean, you know, we're talking about his quick feet, but you saw that, you know, right there at the end of that run, you're going to see him lean. Right there, see now he comes here and then leans with that left shoulder and gets that left shoulder above the first down marker. Well, he's not lean, but he can lean. <laughs> or he could have gotten knocked into that lean. <laughs> at the 49-yard line. Two and a half to go. Roethlisberger throws into traffic, completes it. Hines Ward makes the catch at the 46-yard line. That's a gain of five. It'll be second and five. Hines Ward loves to play. I mean, there's a guy that he smiles and laughs more in a football game than any other player in the NFL, I think, Hines Ward. You know, you kind of want to say he's an underrated, you know, wide receiver. He's one of the best. He's been, he's been to the Pro Bowl in the last four years. And before this season is much farther along, he'll become the all-time leader in receptions 
eclipsing John Stallworth. Here's the bus on second down, and again, it's going to be a third and one, and that takes us to the two-minute warning and a huge play coming when we come back from the 42-yard line, 158 left in regulation. San Diego up by one perilously. In 1987, three-time race winner Al Unser Sr. was without a ride for the Indy 500. But when Team Penske driver Danny and Gaius was injured in a crash, Unser was called into action. The 47-year-old veteran made the most of his opportunity. Working his way up from his 20th place starting position, Unser outlasted Mario Andretti and Roberto Guerrero to claim his fourth win, becoming the oldest winner in race history. only thinking of success he's only thinking of destruction but to conquer he must obliterate the hopes of his opponent and be the only man standing fight night only on espn as well on the other side so as not to give San Diego any time at the end. Yeah, they also have Dan Kreider in here, the, the, the fullback, so he weighs 255 pounds, and you have Bettis who weighs 255 pounds, so you have 500 pounds of guys coming through that hole <laughs> behind the offensive line. From the 38, the 118, Roethlisberger throwing, and that's caught, and now they're in field goal range as Antoine randall makes the catch at the 28-yard line. And that is Roethlisberger, who is down and really hurt. So timeout taken, and getting up now is, is Charlie Batch, because their regular backup quarterback, who would be Tommy Maddox, suffered a calf injury in practice on Friday. So Maddox is not even here, and Batch would have to come in. Look at him. We talk about how a quarterback has to be has to be tough, and, and he can't look at a rush. He just has to feel it, and he has to step in. Ben Roethlisberger steps in with his left foot and steps right into that. And that's Luis Castillo, the rookie from Northwestern, and so, if nothing else, Roethlisberger, you have to come out for at least one play. And hopefully, it's it's not very serious. But when somebody is injured, out you come. So, Batch will take the next snap. The game is on the line here. The ball will be at the 29-yard line. Jeff Reed, their field goal kicker, is a guy who's made 23 straight from inside 50. 
So there is Reed. You have 65 seconds left in the game, but right now the Steelers thinking about their quarterback, their stud. Right, they're thinking about that, and the situation here isn't bad for Charlie Batch to come in because it's second and, and what, a half a yard, so they can run, you know, and, and just keep running the ball to get a first down, take off time, you know, take time off the clock, and then, and then take the field goal attempt. But this doesn't look good at all. For Ben Roethlisberger. Well, he gets up. Charlie Batch is a guy who's been around fourth year with the Steelers, though he's thrown only eight passes with them. But remember, going back a few years, Batch was going to be the savior See, with that, the Detroit Lions. That was really tough there where, where Ben Roethlisberger steps up, leads with his, his left leg, and Luis Castillo is right there hitting him. Looked like flush right on the kneecap. I mean, all Charlie Batch has to do here, I would think, is hand the ball off. I don't think there should be any situation where Charlie Batch is going to have to throw the ball unless there's a penalty or something like that, and they get in and get knocked out of field goal range. And that's what the Chargers' defense has to do here, try and knock them out of field goal range. Second and one. Batch was on injured reserve last year. They want to get the first down so they can force San Diego to use its timeouts. And they give it to the bus. And the bus is apparently over the line for a first down. Let's see where they spot it. And they will. That's a first down. It's very important in that it makes San Diego now use its timeouts defensively to try to conserve some time, preserve some time on the other side of this. Monday Night Football being brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Less than a minute left. The Steelers on the move, still trailing by one on Monday Night Football here on ESPN and the big wild card. Their star quarterback on the bench having his left knee looked at. Let's get back out to San Diego. Go had to take a, a timeout. They only have one. So in effect, Pittsburgh can run it all the way down pretty much to the end here and then put it in the hands of Reed but if they don't gain another yard at this point you are still looking at about a 46 yard field goal to win the game and I think they're probably going to you know gain some more yards on first and second down here uh, you know now if you still had Ben Roethlisberger in I would like to take a shot at the goal line I mean I think that's the play here that you you run and then you take one shot before you settle on the field goal. With Charlie Batch in here, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it with a backup quarterback. At the 27 yard line, the bus has it. The bus takes it to the 24 yard line. So right now, as they spot at the 25, it's about a 43 yard field goal. Marty's between a rock and a hard place. They only have that one timeout. If you're Pittsburgh, Two, if you can get a few more yards here, you might want to try with a little time left on the clock to kick it on third down in case of a bad snap. All those things going through Power's mind right now. Second down and eight. The bus. A hard three, 22-yard line, so now it's about a 40-yard field goal. You have 10 seconds remaining, and Pittsburgh is going to take a timeout. And as I suspected, you may want to you may want to do it here, just in case you have a bad snap. Yeah, for that and for that that 10 second runoff too. That that if they were to move or have a penalty before the ball was snapped, then they get 10 seconds runoff. So uh, of course there's a timeout, so that wouldn't happen anyway. So you want to you want to save that down, and if anything does happen, you still have that fourth down. Now if you have a bad snap as you hold, we saw this in a game a few years ago in Green Bay, the best thing to do is to get it and then throw it away. That would stop the clock. Otherwise, if you get tackled, you run the risk of the clock running out. So that would be the smart thing to do if you have a bad snap. You have Greg Warren snapping. You have Chris Gardaki, the longtime punter, the veteran, who's held for a few kicks. And Reed, who's been pretty automatic from this distance. It'll be a 40-yarder. They, in effect, win the game. There might be a few seconds left 
at the end, but it would take a San Diego miracle. And now timeout will be taken by San Diego on the 64-degree night. Diego. Take the charge timeout. They'll take a timeout to ice the kicker. Yeah, it's funny, this crowd, there's so many Steeler fans here that everyone, everyone is going nuts and you don't know who they're going nuts for. Are they going nuts to, to make the kick or are they Charger fans that are going nuts to miss the kick? I guess in the neighborhood of about 12 to 15,000 Pittsburgh fans here tonight. The crowd is, has numbered more than 68,000. We'll get a report as we go off the air on the autotrader.com postgame show as to the condition of Roethlisberger with that knee wrapped and iced. Yeah, and sometimes they don't know about those things for a day or so. You know, you probably swell up a little and then you have to let it calm down and all those things. And what they're thinking about right now, this one. Rookie snapper Greg Warren, free agent out of North Carolina, veteran holder Gardaki, and Reed for a 40-yarder. And everything is perfect. Snap, hold, kick. And San Diego has six seconds to affect a Cal Stanford run back. As you said, everything was perfect. Perfect snap, perfect hold on the perfect spot, and the perfect kick. The Steelers are kind of torn now. You know, they, they have a victory. They've done everything, but they have their starting quarterback uh, on the bench. And uh, the kick going through is a good sight. Your quarterback with an anything is not a good sight. And now you worry about Jacksonville next week, and Marty's got to worry about going to Oakland. And unless San Diego pulls off a miracle finish here, the Chargers will go to two and three. And in all three losses, they will have lost the lead in the fourth quarter against Dallas, against Denver, and now here. And Jerome Bettis with those two big third and one conversions. So you look at his numbers, nothing to write home about, but he was there in crunch time. And it set up Reed. And now the Chargers will set up a run back with a lot of laterals because it's about the only way to keep it going unless Sproles winds up with a football. Yeah, there's no way they're going to let Sproles uh, wind up with the ball unless they lateral to him. And Reed with one of those mid-range rounders. So they get it back to Sproles at the 23-yard line. And Sproles can get it back to only about midfield. He tries to get rid of the ball, but it's over. And that's the way it will end. And Bill Cower watched his team lose a 14-point lead, get it back, lose it again, and then win it on the Reed field goal with six seconds left in the game. And the Pittsburgh Steelers go to four and one, but that's the big story tomorrow morning in Pittsburgh. What about Ben? So the Pittsburgh Steelers make a fine comeback after having a large lead. They have to come back and regain it on two occasions and do so with a 24 to 22 victory over the San Diego Chargers. Jeff Reed, 40-yard field goal, wins it with six seconds left. Coming up, week six edition of Sunday Night Football on ESPN. That to be followed by Monday Night Football. The Rams and the Colts from Indianapolis, where Peyton Manning leads his 5-0 Colts against the Rams. Well, we thought it would be an outstanding Monday Night Football matchup, and it was. Sports Center's coming up next. For our Latin American audience, for our entire ESPN crew, I'm Mark Brown. So long for now. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. The final score from San Diego, the Steelers beat the Chargers 24-22.
ESPN thanks you for watching this presentation of the National Football League. Senira.